finding confidence intervals when we know the population standard deviation or our sample size is greater than 30. Okay, what we're doing here is we are basically given an interval estimate of the population mean. And we're doing that by taking a sample. So here's our sample mean, the x bar. And we're adding and subtracting what's called a margin of error. Okay, and the margin of error is found by the z score for how many standard deviations I want to be away from the mean multiplied by the standard error of the mean, okay, giving me you know, an interval range here. The most common confidence intervals are the 90% confidence interval, okay, which means I'm looking at the middle 90% of my data. So if I were to find the z-scores for that, what I would do is I would actually take that 90% from the middle, and that would mean I would have 10% total for the two tails, giving me 5% here for this tail. Okay, so this would be 5%. And if I use my chart, my table of values, um, my z for the normal curve, and I would look that up, I would find here that this z-score would be negative 1.65. And on the right, it would be a positive 1.65. Okay. And the plus and minus, though, is taken care of in this formula. Okay, I would either subtract the 1.65 and add the 1.65. Okay. The next most common is the 95% confidence interval, okay, which would mean I would have 2.5% in each tail region. And looking up that value in the chart or using the calculator, um, we went over that in a previous lesson, would be plus or minus 1.96 or most or a lot of books use 2 okay because it's so close to 2 and then we have the 99% confidence interval so we're, we're looking for the 99% of our data that goes around the mean here and again that would leave us with a uh, half a percent in the tail region and looking the inverse norm of that uh, from the table, I would find that I would be 2.58 standard deviations away from the mean. Okay? And those are the values that I'm going to use here, or a couple of them, as I solve through this problem. Okay. So in this particular case, a study of 35 golfers showed that the, their average score on a particular golf course was 92. The standard deviation of the population is 5. First of all, what's the best point estimate for the mean. And actually what I probably should put here is the population mean. What would be the best point estimate? Okay. Well, all this means here is a, I need to know what's a data value that I would use to estimate the population mean. Well, the best estimate is always going to be the sample mean then for the population. which in this case, the sample mean was 92. That's the best point estimate at this time that I have. Now I'm going to use that to figure out a 95% confidence interval for the mean. I'm going to get an interval estimate for the population. Okay. And so following the formula that I have up here, I need to know the sample mean, the z-score that corresponds to the 95% confidence interval, Okay. And this little alpha here, what that means is it's, we're talking about the tail region. Okay, So if I'm 95% confident, then I'm 5%, there's a 5% chance that I have an error. And if I take that 5% divided by 2, I get the 2.5, which helped me figure out what that z-score was. Okay, So in this case, for the 95% confidence interval, I'll be using the 1.96 or 2. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 2 in this case. So I have my sample mean, which is 92. Okay. And I'm going to subtract 2 for my z-score. My standard deviation was 5. So I'll put 5. And I'm going to divide that by the square root of my sample size, which was 35. Okay. And then... All I would do on the right-hand side 
is that same calculation that I would add to times 5 divided by the square root of 35. So I'm going to add the margin of error instead. Okay. So I'm going to do a little quick calculation here. Um, 5 divided by the square root of 35 times 2. Okay. So because I didn't bring home my graphing calculator with me, I have to kind of do some calculations by hand here. This is about 1.6903. Okay, so if I take 92 minus that, I come up with an answer of 90.3. Okay, so that's going to give me 90.3, and I'll just write that over here. My left hand of my interval. Okay, now I just need to do the same calculation over here, but I need to add that 1.6903. giving me um, 93.7 rounded. Okay, so I have an interval estimate here for my population mean. If I were to go out and sample more golfers for this particular course, I would estimate that I would find 95% of them to fall between the 90.3 score and the 93.7 score. Now, I just want to do a 99% confidence interval just to kind of show you the difference between the two answers. What's going to happen here is if I want to be 99% confident, my range is going to be even wider. Hence, I'm multiplying now by a z-score of 2.58. So, I would have 92 minus 2.58 times 5 divided by the square root of 35. And then the same on the right-hand side, but add 2.58. Okay, so if I do, a, again, a quick calculation here. 5 divided by... 35 the square root times 2.58 and if I add 92 to that that gives me 89.8 so this whole value here 89.8 okay and then the right hand side I come up with 94.2. Okay. So now I'm 99% confident here in this interval that the average scoffing score for a random sample would be between 89.8 and 94.2.